Caleb Dressel is one of the greatest swimmers of all time. And I had the opportunity to sit down and speak with him right before the Tokyo Olympic Games, where he won an incredible five gold medals. Now, in this interview, he shares his regimen both in and out of the water. He also talks about his mental mindset and how he stays sharp on achieving his goals. Now, before we get into the interview, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you're alerted for our next videos. Now, let's go ahead and get right into the interview. Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. We're excited to have you. How you doing? I'm doing good, Ferris. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Right on. So I want to get right into it. Talk to us about what the last six months has been like for you. Uh, a lot of craziness happening in the world. Just kind of walk us through what the last six months has been. Yeah, it, it has been a little wild. Um, you know, everyone's schedules have been uh, a little bit bumpy, but this is where I, I turned to Coach Troy and why I started working with him in the first place. He's got a lot of experience in the sport, which is just a fancy way of saying he's super old and he's been doing what he's been doing a while. So I definitely leaned on him to find me a consistent schedule for him finding me pool time when pools weren't open near me. So he was on everything from the start. Um, I never really had too big of a hiccup with training. Um, of course, my schedule was different. Timing was different and the amount I could swim, it was all a little bit flustered. So Definitely appreciated Troy during this time for his experience and wisdom, which is why I want to work with him in the first place. And it's shown through. Um, it came through big time during this whole mess. And I mean, I have plenty of examples before that, but this is definitely, I feel like the most crucial and important in my career for him coming through shining for me, but it's been great. Troy's been, Troy's been absolutely awesome. You know, just keeping as much consistency as possible during a time that doesn't have much consistency to it. <laughs> Right. Um, so a lot of it goes, goes to Troy. Cool. And walk us through what your routine is like right now. A lot of swimmers, you know, watching this, whether they're, you know, age groupers or adults, they're always curious, you know, what is, what does the life look like for a professional swimmer who does this, you know, full time? Yeah, well, I actually have, um, I'm, I'm back to some normalcy now. So, um, my weight starts at seven. So I was up at six this morning. Um, I cannot eat a lot right when I wake up. So I'll just have a snack and then I'll head to weights for about, about an hour and a half, two hours. And then I'll head to practice for two hours and then I'll be back tonight at five 30. So we got weights, swim for two, do some interviews, eat lunch, <laughs> maybe take a nap, get as much work stuff as I can. And then back to the pool. And then Tuesday is similar, except I don't lift on, on Tuesdays. And then Wednesday and Friday, I single, so I don't have afternoon practice. And Saturday, just a single as well. And then Sunday, I got to get as much rest in as I can before starting the week over again. Awesome. And the mental training is so important too. So all, everything you described is, you know, on the physical side. And I know for you and other top athletes, you know, it's, it's what's going on in the head at the same time. So maybe talk to us about the importance of mental training. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think the mental side of the sport is something that I am really trying to tap into. That's something I've been trying to hone into really since high school. Once I started to find some, some rhythm in the sport and really, you know, start to learn to swim fast, but a lot of it is geared towards the mental side, you know, training of course is going to be a huge component of that, but you also can't train hard if, you don't have the right mental space to be able to attack every practice, to be able to come in with that aggression, to be able to challenge your teammates for them to be able to challenge you. So it really does come full circle, but it always comes back to the mental side of things, which is what I'm huge into. And it's something you can always continuously improve upon, not just with swimming. Um, I mean, I've, I mentioned it in every interview and I think it's so important. It, it comes down to simple things like making your bed, drinking water throughout the day, I mean, eating your veggies, like we all know what to do. It's just whether or not we choose to do them, but it really does for me, it comes back to making your bed. It's, it's those simple mundane tasks, which is the epitome of the sport of swimming. It's the most boring thing swimming up and down, but it's how consistent can you do, can you be doing those, those mundane tasks and then seeing results off of that. So you have to be very patient in this sport, which is, again, it's another, uh, another mental component that you have to work on, um, but you will see results. So Caleb, that's awesome. Like that's, that's so cool because I think like you mentioned, a lot of swimmers, they see someone like yourself or other top athletes and they seem so like out of reach. They seem like they're, it's like, they're not like real people. And I think, you know, not to put words in your mouth, but you want to be approachable to the level of, you know, swimmers can see that you're, you're a, you're a person too, you know, and, and if you can connect with them on a deeper level at more one-on-one. -on -one. So even when I was growing up, it, it almost seems 
some of the the swim the swim icons the swim elites that you see they're out of touch and that's not on that's not their fault um i don't know whose fault it is but if there's a way to kind of bring that into a more personal level because i don't consider myself different than a lot of age group swimmers nowadays um really everyone in the sports just trying to swim fast and have a good time doing it and that's exactly what i'm trying to do um i want to go best times that's the most age group mindset ever but i don't want to i don't want to stray away from that you know and then making making my first olympic team being in the same room as nathan adrian and you know michael phelps and david Plummer, like all these guys it was like oh these are real people these are people I can go get, get advice from. These are people who are, are more than willing to share things with me. They're just great leaders. So if there's a way, if I can bridge that gap between age group swimmer and, you know, world record holder, we're really not that much difference. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you're involved in the sport, you know, beyond that, and you're competing in the ISL and you, you know, you, you'd like to take swimming to the next level. You know, what was that like competing in ISL? ISL was awesome. Um, my, my favorite part about ISL, the thing that really drew me in and engaged me immediately was the team aspect. You know, really only once a year is when, especially being out of college, I, I, I loved college swimming strictly for the team aspect. It was just something different competing for your team. And now turning pro, the only time I get that is with Team USA, which is a complete honor. And I do appreciate every minute I get at, at training camp and competing, whether it's Worlds, Olympics, or Pan Packs, whatever meet. I absolutely love it, but ISL offers it in a different, um, a different way. That's a little like more fun for my, my lack of vocab here. Um, it's less stress because you're not, you're not racing for times. You're just racing to score points for your team. And I think that that's just the most exciting thing ever for the sport because it's just mid season, throw a suit on, let's see where you can go. Um, of course, until the final where you can shave taper and really try to go fast. But mid season, it's just about, you know, being tough racing and competing. And it's just the most organic form of the sport of swimming put on TV. And that's why I think it's so exciting. And it's a show, you got the lights, you got the music, you got the DJ, it's it's everything that it should be for the sport of swimming, for professional swimming, that's put into a two hour, easy to watch, fun to watch, engaging to watch, um, you know, event. Yeah, I will say it is incredible. I was lucky enough to be at the ISL final uh, in Las Vegas, where actually you broke the world record in the 50, uh, which was pretty awesome to watch everything come together and then the skins race. So if you guys aren't familiar, the ISL stands for International Swim League. Um, and we'll also link more info on that in the description. But it's in incredible to see, you know, the sport come together and have that team element, because like you said, you know, the NCAA is you know, only good for four or five years. And then for swimmers outside the United States, you know, this is an opportunity to be on a team and then compete for something at the end. Uh, and the times don't matter. It's all about getting your hand on the wall first. So uh, times do matter, I guess, when you're breaking world records. But uh, for, for the most part, it's all about getting your hand on the wall first. Uh, so that's awesome. Tell us about these stroke dissects that you're doing on YouTube. I mentioned you're involved in a lot of different things and democratizing the sport. So what what's going on with that? Yeah, so I, I don't, I, I want to put as much content as I come as I comfortably can out if I have something to share, and I have the means to do it, and I can easily do it, I, I want to be able to engage with my audience and, you know, leave something behind in the sport if I feel like I can leave if it's just one small thing. And if I, if I could just impact one person, that's a success in my book. So I feel like um, I actually just changed the name after talking to Mel. Um, we changed it to Dressel Dissect. I thought I, had I like it. I had a better ring and actually my roommate, he, he told me from the get go, that's what I should have done. So they're officially called Dressel Dissects now, but they've been like really that. fun. I've always been a nerd in the sport ever since really the first time I can think about getting nerdy with the sport was, I want to say about around seventh grade um, is when I really started to incorporate my body and feel into the sport of swimming and really just try and break everything down for what works for me, stealing ideas from other swimmers, stealing ideas from, you know, uh, swimmers I'm watching on TV and just trying to put together what works for me. And it's been a constant process, a constant puzzle that I've trying to been put together since seventh grade. I mean, I'm 24 right now, so it's been fun. I don't have everything figured out. So Dressel dissects. It's it's cool to watch old races to be able to break them down, um, and not only just talk about technique, but talk about kind of what I was feeling before the race, after the race, and again, just just put it into a more a more personal manner that that it's easy for people to understand that oh, this is just like every race I've done, or that the pool is fifty meters deep in that world. Like it, it, a pool's a pool. Um, the, the goal of the sport is to get 
to that end as fast as you can to get back as fast as you can or to do it four times or a mile, you know, that, that is what swimming is. And the dissects have been really fun to try and put it in more simpler terms, but also more technical terms. Um, but I think if you put things into more technical terms, it becomes a little bit more simple. Yeah, totally. And if you guys haven't checked out these videos, the Dressel dissects, uh, they're absolutely amazing. And I think it's because you're dissecting your own races. It's not like someone like me, you know, giving, I can dissect your race, but like, what good is that? You know, I want to hear it from the actual athlete themselves. And you're really critical about yourself. You know, you're, you're trying to see every little area that you can improve. And I think that goes to the mindset that it takes if you want to be the best at something. It's breaking it apart. And that's why I think it's so fitting that you're building a program piece by piece showing how you can do this on not only an athletic physical level, but on the mental level as well. Um, ha what have you learned about yourself, I guess, in these stroke dissects or dressel dissects now that you've had the opportunity to do a good handful of them? Anything stand out? Yes. Uh, I, I mean, I, I've always known I've been critical of myself, but it's just funny kind of watching people call me out for it. But that, that's what I want. I want you, you got to be able to make fun of yourself. You got to be able to say, oh, I did this wrong. Here's how I can do it better. Or else I, I might as well just retire now. If, if, if I say, oh, that was a perfect race, I, I should be done with the sport. I don't want to have a perfect race. That'd be so boring. Then what am I chasing at this point? Um, right. So I've learned... I can comfortably watch back my races now. I always have, I always had, I thought this stigma that I, I wouldn't be able to, or I didn't like watching them before, but now, now I find myself looking at all whole bunch of different races, not just of myself. Um, but it, it's a lot easier for me now to watch back my videos before it would put me right back in that spot. The heart rate would go up. I'd get you know, a little nervous. It felt like I was racing again. So I, I can do it more comfortably and really pinpoint where in my races I, I, I could have gotten better, but it, I have seen the progression of strokes from high school until now, even behind the blocks, you pick up on these little things of things I've done similar, but things I've also changed. So it, it's fascinating. I've gotten a lot more comfortable watching back and being open about, you know, criticizing myself. Cause I think it's a very important part of the sport. You know, it, it's not always going to be rainbows and butterflies or however the saying goes, you know, you, you have to be, you got to be able to make fun of yourself. You got to be able to critique yourself and you got to be able to criticize yourself. It's as simple as that. You guys heard it right from one of the very best that you can always improve, always find ways to get faster. What's in store for Caleb Dressel in the next six to 12 months? What, what's, uh, what's on your agenda? Goodness. Uh, well, I'm hoping ISL, um, goes through that. That is something that's definitely within reach that I'm, I'm excited to do. Um, I'm getting married in February, so that's, that's coming Ooh, up. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. But that's been, it's been fun planning the wedding and stuff with Megan. Um, it's been a fun process. And then really, I, again, it, it's, I know what my big picture is, but I like to take it one day at a time. So here in four hours, I leave for practice. And then the goal is to have a really good afternoon practice this morning. I was on it. So I want to keep the ball rolling and keep that momentum going for the rest of this week. So you know, of course, uh, you know, ISL and then planning a wedding. But for today, I, I hope to have a really good practice this afternoon. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, end the week well, and then chill out Sunday. I love it. You heard it, guys. Take it one day at a time. You might have these massive ambitions like maybe Caleb has. We know he has. But if you break it apart piece by piece, you're going to be on your way. Uh, so thank you so much for doing that for the swimming community and democratizing the sport. And also thank you for spending some time with us on the Ask a Swim Pro Show. Yeah, you're welcome, Ferris. That was that was a good time. That blazer's fire, by the way. I just noticed it a couple minutes ago. I was like, I was like, I had to say something to it. That's nice. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys later. Happy swimming. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview with the legendary Caleb Dressel. You can see just how special of a guy he is both in and out of the water. Now, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Can't wait to hear from each and every one of you. Until the next video, happy swimming.